Good morning and welcome back to another video. Today I'm really excited to show you how to make this beautiful bracelet. It's done using these beautiful two hole ginkgo leaf beads and they are just so much fun to work with. I had a blast designing this one. I had to say I had a little help from my favorite book in the whole world. You guys have seen it before, but it's this one right here. And I absolutely love it. Whenever I reread it, I find something new. Under the fancy ladders section, I saw this. And it's actually for a pair of earrings. And it's just really cool because I thought, I wonder if I could fit a ginkgo bead in this section. And I tweaked it, played around with it. It took a while. And that's where I came up with this beautiful design right here. And I just want to show you, it's got some weight. It's absolutely stunning on. I love this piece so very much. So I'm going to not do this part um, with the chain and the lobster. I'm going to show you, look this colorway. Look at how beautiful and cool. It's so unique and bright and fun. I'm going to show you, though, how to attach a bead as your clasp. So that's going to be something a little different because I've never done that before. I usually just do buttons or, you know, chain and that. So that'll be fun. We're going to run through our material list. You're going to need some 15s, 11s. These are both Toho. Some 3 millimeter rounds and some 4 millimeter rounds. And these are both Druck. Some Ginkgo leaf beads and a clasp of your choice. And I must say... My bracelet measured six and a half inches long. I went through an entire tube, eight to nine gram tube of ginkgo leaf beads. So you have to measure depending on your wrist size, you know what you want, but I wanted mine nice and tight and solid. And yes, it used the whole tube. So today, what I'm gonna do is just practice the pattern. It's so repetitive, so easy and fun. And then we'll move on to the last two stitches I have here, end it, and then we'll do our um, clasp and we'll be all set. And we'll do some light decorating too, but you wanna start and end with this section. So that's why I'm doing a little sample piece here. So go ahead and grab whatever stringing material you want. Today I'm using eight pound fire line and a size 11 beading needle. We're gonna start by picking up a three millimeter round and six size 11s and a three millimeter round and six more 11s. Okay, we're gonna slide it down. Leave yourself about a six to eight inch long tail and that's just so you can attach your clasp. And then we're gonna pick up our work and we're gonna tie ourselves a knot and I want it to grab just like that. Pull, leave that tail alone, just pretend it's not even there and we're gonna weave around this whole piece and reinforce it. I'm just gonna hold that tail tight in my other hand and weave around this whole thing one time and then I'll show you where to step out. This was so much fun to design. I mean, at first I had a lot of difficulties. I couldn't get it to lay the right way. I was getting a little frustrated. And then I said, just keep going because I was almost there. And then I finally tweaked it and I said, oh my God, it's gorgeous. When I put it on, I just fell in love. So that's how I knew immediately that, you know, I have to do a video on this because it's just gorgeous. Okay, so we're coming around. We're gonna go through that three millimeter round plus two more 11s right after that. So you wanna step out that second 11 after that three millimeter round. And now we're ready to pick up our ginkgo beads. So we're gonna pick up one 11, one ginkgo, just like this and then five fifteens, and I'm gonna drop it all the way down to the work. I'm gonna go through that empty hole of the ginkgo bead, just like that. Now I'm gonna pick up three, one, 
and I flipped my work. One, two, three elevenths. And now we're just going to go right down into that three millimeter plus those next two. Pull. And now, and now we're going to pick up one, 11, and then a ginkgo bead in this direction, just like this, plus five 15s. Slide it down, go back through that empty hole, pull because you don't want any thread showing. And I'm going to hold the work a second because we're going to pick up three and I want to make sure you can clearly see where we're going. So we're going to go right through that three millimeter and then step up through these two 11s right after that three millimeter. And give it a good pull just like this. And if anything starts to loosen up, just pull on those 15s and then pull on that working thread. So you want a shape that looks just like this. I'm trying to even these out a little. It'll drive me cuckoo. Okay, so just like that. Pretty cool. All right, so now here's the next section. So we're going to just pick up four 11s, a three millimeter round, four more 11s. And we're coming out these two 11s. We're just gonna come around and go right back through these two 11s, that three millimeter round, up through these two. And now we have to reinforce this part. This was the part that kept tripping me up. I could not figure out how, how it was so loose and all the threads were showing. All it is, is just going around all these beads one time. All the new beads that we just put on. Plus these two again, the three millimeter, and then the two. And then we're gonna always step out that little three millimeter round. And don't be afraid to pull and tug on this. It's fine, perfectly fine. So we're gonna step out that three millimeter, if I can get there, plus two 11s, always, always two 11s. So through this three millimeter, plus these two 11s right here. And now we're in position to start the ginkgo leaf again. I'm not sure if the finish on these does something different, but it doesn't look perfectly circular to me. This is, like I said, just a demo, just to get you used to the pattern. So now, I know I wanna pick up my ginkgo bead like this. So it's 111, the ginkgo, 515s, and then we're gonna drop it down, and we're gonna go right through that empty hole and now we're gonna pick up three elevens and go right through that three millimeter plus two more elevens and pull just like that. And now we're gonna pick up one eleven and now we know we have to pick up that ginkgo bead just like this so it matches this one plus our five fifteens. Slide it down. Go right through that empty hole. And then we'll pick up three. Go right through this three millimeter. And those two 11s. If you can do it in one shot, do it. If not, do it one at a time. But we we'll always want to step out those two 11s right after that three millimeter right there. And again, now it's time to do our circle. And that really straightened out beautifully, actually. So we're going to pick up four. 
11s, one three millimeter round, and then four more 11s. We're coming out in this direction, so I'm gonna come around and go back through these two just like this. In that three millimeter, here's the part where we have to just reinforce. I know it's a little tedious, but I promise you, it's so important. It really, really is. It made such a difference. Everything was wobbly and loose and I couldn't figure out why. And then I just decided I'm going to heavily reinforce that area, see if it helps. And it actually worked. So back through everything. And then we're going to pop out that three millimeter plus the two 11s right after it. I, I know I sound like a broken record, but it's really important that you don't miss that step. So right there. Those two 11s. And now I know it's time to add the ginkgo bead like this. So it'll always be one 11, the ginkgo, just like that, because it matches. And then five 15s. Okay, slide it down, and then we're gonna go right down the empty hole, pull, pick up three 11s, go right through that three millimeter plus two more, and pull. And then we know now, one 11, ginkgo bead like this, five 15s, Slide it down, go through the empty hole, pull, and then we'll pick up three and go right through that three millimeter plus two. And like I said, don't stress out if you can't do it all in one shot. You know me, I'm <laughs> a little impatient, so I like to have my step ups all done at once. And now it's right back to four. And then a three millimeter round, four more. And we're coming out these two, come back around, go through these two, plus that three millimeter, and then up these two, and all the way around, and we'll reinforce. And then always remember, we're gonna step out the two 11s. See how loose everything is? That's why we reinforce. But I'm gonna show you, stop right here. So step out those two 11s and then you would begin again with your ginkgo beads. But I'm gonna move over to the one we have going because we have quite a bit of things to cover. And I'm gonna move this to the side. hot mess everywhere. I think I like those colors a lot too. They look, again, I don't know why I keep pulling Victorian looking colors, but I think it's pretty. But I wanted to do something really, really fun for fall. So that's why I pulled out these beauties right here with the bronze. Okay. So I'm going to pull off a little bit so you can see. And here's our other one. I love the silver. I'm definitely keeping that one. So I left off here so I know it's time to do... Sorry, my thread is very long, which it should be. So I know it's time to add the ginkgo leaf because I left off with that circle part. So I'm going to pick up 111 ginkgo bead and then five 15s and then slide it down. Go down the empty hole and I'm gonna pick it up. I can hold it tension wise a lot better when I hold it. So three 11s through this round and now I'm holding it too, too tight here. Come on, Alicia. Through that three millimeter plus two more 11s. OK, 
Okay, and then you'll pull. And now 111, they can go in this way because we want them all laying in the same direction, plus 515s. Drop it down, go through that empty hole, and then I'm going to pull down because it's a little loose, and then pick up three, one, two, three elevens, go through this round right here, plus two. So this one, and then right up these two, and then we're ready to make our last little section. I'm gonna pull really tight, make sure everything looks good. Perfect. So it's just four 11s, one, two, three, four. Uh, round, three millimeter round, and then four more 11s. And then we're coming out. Again, these two 11s, we're gonna just bring it around and go right back through those two 11s that three millimeter round, and then this is the part where we'll retrace everything. And this time, after we're done retracing it, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna flip here. It's just easier for me, um, tension, tension-wise. Um, once you're done reinforcing this whole thing, step out of a three millimeter round, okay? And like I said, I know it's tedious, but trust me, this thing will hold up forever. It'll just, it needed it. It definitely needed it. Let me put it that way. Okay, so I want to step out here and I want to add that bead, but I want to keep a close eye on my measuring because I don't want this too, too long. So right now I'm exactly at five and a half. So I have a whole inch to play with. So I want it to be six and a half. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up two 311s and then, let's see, I'm trying to think of what will look prettiest. One round, three millimeter round. Yeah, perfect. Then the bead that I'm gonna use as my clasp, one three millimeter round, and this is all trial and error. If you don't like it, you don't have to keep it. I'm gonna do just 111 and run right back through that three millimeter, the bead and the next three millimeter right there. So I just skipped that last 11 so it anchors all the beads on. And then I'm gonna pick up three more 11s and I'm coming out right now in this direction, so I know I need to come back around, go through that three millimeter, and I'm gonna hold a second. I wanna make sure it looks good. I love it, perfect. Now we'll just have to go up and around, reinforce everything, so go up through all the beads. It's pretty fun to put in a gemstone or, you know, a really cool bead that you want to add as a clasp. I think that adds more, um, just more character to the piece. And I love that. All right, so I'm only going to go around it twice because I do, we do have to run back up this area. So no worries here. And I have a good old knot in there. Okay, back through the round. So don't worry if it's loose. Like I said, we're gonna come back around. Now I just wanna show you where we need to step out to do a very simple decoration. So we're gonna run down these four 11s right here. All I'm doing is I wanna step out that fifth 15 without showing any thread. So I'm gonna go up through that one 11, the ginkgo bead, and then I'm gonna exit that fifth 15. So weave all the way over. I'm on number four, here's my fifth, and here we go. We're gonna add in the brace, which made it super decorative, super 
beautiful. One four millimeter round right through the next five. That's all you have to do. Look at how pretty that looks. The shape and everything just fit perfectly. <laughs> that was the other part I kept getting frustrated about. I was like, why is it this thing laying nicely? Straight and even. This one knot is going to be terrible. <sighs> you know, I never edit out these things because it does happen. So if you can, um, just go through. Here's the knot. Take it out because I want you to see that stuff like this really happens and all I do is pull and it comes right out. Okay, so back to the decorating. One four millimeter right up through the next group of five. It's going to stabilize it, give it a really beautiful look. And I'm going to pull down and we're going to do this all the way down and that's it super cool and I have to say these colors are so not me but I absolutely love them okay so we'll just keep going I know it's not the funnest thing that's why I had the bracelet almost built for you because this is just so easy it's just one four up through all these five little 15s and then pop another one in and I mean look at how much how beautiful that looks in there it just totally needed that so right up through here and down and you'll continue that and I won't be working the whole thing because it's so easy. But I want to just make sure you get it. When we get to the other side. Um, yeah, because it's very hard for me to see these little tiny 15s in here. So it'll take me forever for you to watch something that is so simple just popping in a little four millimeter but I want to show you how to add the loop for your beautiful clasp so I'm just gonna go quickly down I love this color too it's a matte finish so it takes like the shine and I don't know it's very very cool it um, Complement it really well, I think, anyway. So I hope you guys have fun. Okay. Almost there. Almost at the end. And then I'll show you where to cross over and continue adding your four on the other side. Your four millimeter. So here we are, the last stitch. So all I'm gonna do is weave over. So I'm gonna go down this ginkgo bead into that 111 right there. And then I'm gonna weave over. So I'm gonna go down through these two 11s, that three millimeter, those two 11s. I'm just cutting across, nothing hard, straight up through that 111. And we're out on the other side now. So we'll just go right up through these five 15s. And then you would continue a four millimeter through the next group of five. And that's it. Now, when you get to the end, you'll have to just throw in a couple knots and that's Anywhere you can find space, throw in a couple knots. Just like that. So you would continue doing that all the way down. Oh my goodness, I love it. So for the moment, let's put a needle on our tail. 
you see where I'm stepping out? I'm stepping out of an 11. We want to be stepping out of that little tiny three millimeter round. Oh, the troubles today. What is happening? Okay, I have to be honest. I'm having a terrible, terrible time finding good needles. Seriously, look at all these needles that I've been testing out. <laughs> tons and tons of needles and some are so difficult to even thread on a new piece of string. It's super frustrating. See? I don't know what's going on here. And again, that's another thing that can happen. Finding a good needle. It's all trial and error, I guess. Oh my gosh, I just don't know why they don't thread easily. That's why I loved my tulip needles until they backfired on me. Okay, so we're on to the tail side at the moment. I'm just going to try and get this other thread out of the way so it doesn't get in our way when we're doing this part. So we need to just step out of that three millimeter round and we only have to make a circle big enough to fit our beautiful bead through. So I'm gonna go and pick up just a random number. All right, I did 22. I don't know where that came from. 22, I'm coming out here. I'm just gonna come around and go right back through that three millimeter. Oh, I can tell it's too small. Let's see, I'm gonna wrap it real tight. This is how I test fit. Hmm. Actually, that's gonna work. You don't want it too tight and you don't want it too loose either. So I'm going to stick with 22 and just continue around reinforcing this whole area. And then I'll show you how to throw a couple knots in. So when you're done adding your four millimeter beads, you'll know what I mean by anywhere you want as long as no thread is showing. So I'm good right here because it is a tight spot in there for some reason. I don't want to stress it out. So what I do is I'm going to weave down again into the main work. All right. And then right, let's see, I'm going to go over here through these two little 11s before the three millimeter round. And this is a perfect space. I'm going to pick up that thread space before I pull the loop my needle in, pull down, and I'll do that again. I always like to put two in, pull down, and then I'm going to weave up and away. Just up and out and burn, and you're good to go there. So that's exactly what, geez, it burned, and I couldn't even tell where it burned. Oh my gosh. I just got so afraid that it burned through the work. It's one of those days, It's my Friday is like a Monday, to be honest with you. It feels like a Monday. So you would just continue adding your fours all the way down and then pop in, in a couple knots and you're good to go. So I really hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and you can definitely use the chain um, that I use. I just use a little piece of leftover chain. I added a charm. All I did was put a little tiny loop on either end and it worked beautifully to add the chain and the jump rings and all that fun stuff. So you can end it however you want. I just wanted to try something a little different. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.